Welcome to another show of Celebrate Life. My name is Gary DeCarlis, and I'll be your host today. The goal of this show is to celebrate the lives of everyday Vermonters. Uh, some people you'll be able to recognize, today's guest will be one of those, and other people, um, close friends and family might be the only folks that actually know them. But I can guarantee you that everyone has a wonderful story to tell about their lives. Um, if you're inter inter interested in being interviewed or you know someone who might want to be interviewed, please uh, email me at celebratelife0747 at gmail.com. Also, if you have a question for today's interviewee, uh, again, send me an email and I'll get it over to him and, uh, and uh, we'll get a response back to you. So thank you very much. Well, today's guest is, um, I'd like to welcome Joe McNeil, a distinguished attorney in Burlington and Vermont and former city attorney for this great city of Burlington, Vermont. Welcome, Joe. Good morning, Gary. Happy to be here with you. Great to have you on the show. It's nice to see you. So I, and just for the viewers sake, Joe and I worked together for a number of years when I was on the city council, Joe was the city attorney. Uh, and maybe we can talk a little bit about those very calm years that we spent together. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Joe, I'd like you to um, maybe take us back to your early formative years and talk about your life and your family and things that were special to you. And we'll go from there. Sure. Uh I, I grew up in an interesting part of Burlington, probably for its day, the most diverse part of the city. We, uh, I, I grew up on the corner of, for the most part, on the corner of Loomis and Prospect Street. So in the north central part of the city, it didn't have a name like the Old North End or the Hill Section or right. anything like that. It was... Uh, but it was distinguished by the fact that it was traditionally what I would call an old Protestant Yankee neighborhood, but uh, it had been uh, infiltrated, if you will, by, uh, uh, by um, a good part of the Jewish community and uh, a good part or were at least an increasing part of Irish and French um, uh, individuals and families. So, and it was reflected in uh, like Taft School, uh, the, which was the elementary school for the area. Mm -hmm. And uh, and as a result, growing up, you know, uh, we had a sand lot that we just called the lot. Uh, and we would actually have games named Christians versus Jews. And, Interesting. And, and, and Taft School, Taft School was sort of the center. Uh, additionally, I think I spent, well, not quite as much, but a fair amount of my time at what uh, my Jewish friends called the center, which was a Havis at a uh, synagogue, um, because, uh, because it had a basketball court, uh, ah. in the multi-purpose room. And as a result, I came to know Rabbi Wall very well. Um, mm. and, um, and got an appreciation for him, mm. um, it would, that, that lasted almost lifelong. I would see him periodically thereafter. He would come in and ask me to stop bouncing the basketball during, uh, service. <laughs> so, th and then, uh, the other, um, uh, formative, if you will, uh, part of my existence was the YMCA. Uh, mm. I, uh, learned to swim there. Um, Mr. Ray Maddox, who was the executive director, was almost like a uh, an additional dad to mm. uh, the folks that uh, went there, and it was a it was a great um, community center, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, my family was a large Irish Catholic family. Uh, and we had uh, multi-generations living with us. My, my grandmother lived with us and my great aunt. Um, and, and I got 
a good bit of um, their uh, philosophy on life and and their experiences weaved into my life as a result. I thought it was mm -hmm. a rich a rich experience. Um, my great aunt worked in the woolen mill in Winooski, mm -hmm. and um, and she uh, was a passionate FDR Democrat, and, mm -hmm. and I can remember having uh, animated discussions where I would talk about how FDR you know, gave away Eastern Europe and she would say, don't you say a bad word about uh, <laughs> President Roosevelt who did so much for us with social security, et cetera. <laughs> so uh, that, and then um, uh, a good part of my dad's and mom's friends were um, either World War II veterans or spouses uh, that had mm. that experience and and they would sit around the kitchen table uh, talking both politics and life experience mm. uh, that that mm. inform that informed me as well as my grandmother who was a nurse and um, and so had uh, the background with regard to the hospital and all of that. So wow, rich, uh, rich. It was it was a rich experience. I wow, thought. for sure, absolutely. Huh. So then, um, the other uh, the other thing that I would mention is sort of a a base for me growing up uh, that is still in the news today was Memorial Auditorium. Oh, um, mm. Memorial Auditorium in my day uh, was the location for uh, athletic events, indoor basketball primarily, but uh, for UVM, for St. Mike's, uh, really? for, for uh, Cathedral and then Rice High Schools, Burlington High School and Winooski High School. Really? Uh, and it was, it was uh, being used all the time. Hmm. So part of the local lore for for us growing up was very frankly, how could we get into Memorial Auditorium without paying? And, and, and there were uh, there were any number of uh, methods that were used, um, uh, some distinctly unsafe. Um, the the uh, uh, Memorial Auditorium was built with recessed bricks, every other uh, sort of layer moving up. So if you were really careful, you could climb your way up with perches. <laughs> and what would happen is that somebody would, would, would join money to have somebody pay to get in and then they'd open up a bathroom window and we'd climb <laughs> the wall to get in or open a door. Amazing. Uh, uh, a youthful experience that I'll tell you about was um, there was also it's what we call the coal shoot and the yeah. the coal shoot um, was as um, as described yeah, it was you, the place I'll where the, the coal was delivered to the auditorium when it was coal fired so there would be periodically yeah, exactly. a coal pile okay. and on this oh. if you couldn't if you couldn't get in memorial auditorium any other way you would try the coal shoot and one day i i did it for <laughs> Uh, to the uh, with the intent of seeing uh, a drummer by the name of Gene Krupa. Oh uh, yeah, who was famous from the big band era, and uh, as 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 bad luck would have it, uh, the Memorial Auditorium had just received a dose of coal, and I came right down on it. So I uh, I emerged, you know, blackened from head, head to toe, and I was and I was going up the back stairs of Memorial Auditorium, and uh, to get to the bathroom to sort of clean up a little bit, and the who was there was this man standing there I didn't recognize, and he said. Boy, you must really want to see this show. <laughs> and I said, "Well, yeah." And, and he said, "Well, I'm Gene Krupa." Oh and, no, you're uh, kidding! 
He said, wow. I think you're not going to be in a position to uh, clean up well enough to sit in the audience without scaring people. So here's what I'd like you to do. He says, I'll give you a chair from the dressing room and you bring it up on the stage, but on the, on the other side of the curtain so people can't see you. Right. You sit there for the whole concert. So are you, that's amazing, I had, Joe. I had that, I had that experience. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That the is other, cool. The other, um, the other thing that I think we both have in common now that was nurtured for me as a youth, Gary was uh, love of train travel, and mm. uh, and we, um, my grandmother, when I was in the third grade, uh, took me on an overnight train from Burlington Union Station to New York City, uh, no and kidding. came came into New York City on uh, I'll never forget it the, the the lines that were still elevated at that point I think yeah. I think we came down the west side uh but then to to grand over to Grand Central Station and you know that was such a such a mind expanding uh thing yes. kid from Burlington exactly so, Thanks to Melinda Moulton and others uh, like Pat gonna, Leahy who have worked so hard to exactly. train service back here. We're all looking forward. We're going to do it again. Yeah, That's we're going right. to do it again, hopefully. <laughs> That's great. Wow. Amazing. The other thing that I would uh, just mention um, about, uh, about growing up is um, I... I, uh, in the summers, would go to this place called Camp Holy Cross that was out on Mallets Bay, the Outer Bay. And as a result, uh, I developed uh, both a love of uh, water sports, water skiing in particular, and, mm. and boating, et cetera, mm. uh, as well as uh, baseball. That was, that was a good part of our existence. We would mm. have what amounted to athletic competition against the other boys and girls uh, camps that were huh. populated all over Lake Champlain in those days, like wow. Grand Ledge and Abnaki and Hochelaga and, um, and that sort of thing. So wow. as, a as a result of both the YMCA and, the, uh, and Camp Holy Cross, I think I developed uh, not only a lifelong appreciation of, of water activities, but a real love for Lake Champlain and mm. and exp exploring it, uh, being on it, et cetera. Yes. But I would yeah. also say, Gary, and, and this reflects into areas where you have spent a good part of your professional life. Um, you know, um, our family was not, um, not entirely removed, not not removed at all from uh, the the difficulties relating to substance abuse. And mm -hmm. I had family members that uh, uh, that were, you know, had difficulty uh, with um, either alcohol, the primarily alcohol yeah. uh, consumption, yeah. and I uh, I knew at a at a young age uh, from experiences dealing with it, that that was something I needed to be very careful about uh, mm. because, because of a proclivity uh, for that type of addiction. Yeah. And so yep. I was careful there. I'm not so careful with like sweets and sugar, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay. But, but, but uh, I would the... say that on a, on a more serious side that it um, it teaches you uh, that life can be vulnerable and it, yeah. it, it teaches you that uh, sometimes uh, when you're knocked down, you need uh, the truth is uh, the, the character is not shown necessarily by the fact that you are knocked down because we all are. Right, but uh, your resilience and getting back up again, and yeah, exactly. I would, I would mention that uh, my dad, who was a practicing attorney before me, um, 
in in Vermont, uh, he he would be proud to say that, uh, like the last decade of of his life uh, was uh, spent sober as a result of you know uh, tremendous effort on his part and others' part uh, to to help mm -hmm. him. And mm -hmm. So, you and know, it is that. A, it it is a tremendous effort. It's, um, I don't think people appreciate what it takes to be able to move to that place, to be sober. And with that background, it's, uh, it takes every fiber of your body to pull that off. Yeah, it sure does. Yeah. Um, so that, um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't all just, uh, excitement and fun there were yeah, some exactly. serious parts to growing up as well but i mm. think um, i was informed by it all and challenged by it all and also yep. profited by it all in the end yeah and joe did you so you on your own though came to to realize that you had to be careful with it that was something that you you did on your own yeah i just i I discern that both from the experience with others. Uh, one, we had 11 kids in our family. Okay. Uh, uh, I would say right now, uh, six or seven of us are um, totally uh, s sober in the sense yep. of alcohol. Oops. Do not do not consume alcoholic beverages because of yep. uh, the. I, I am not among that number, but I but I'm very very careful. Yeah, um, yeah. And um, yeah, so uh, I yeah. did come to that realization. Uh, one of my siblings, my brother, who may well have been the most talented of us all um, mm. in every respect, because he was both intellectually curious, but also um very hands-on in terms of figuring out how things work mechanically and mm. and, and somehow that gene missed me but uh, <laughs> uh, he he had it in spades so he was our he was our family go-to guy and and uh he he battled that demon for most of his life and um mm. uh, and departed Tough. early we believe because of it um, yeah uh, but um, nonetheless, I think yeah. we're, we're all stronger as a result. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, there's an old saying that uh, the oyster that creates the pearl, or the grain of sand that is in the oyster creates the pearl. And those, those irritations in life, those challenges in life make us better and stronger uh, and yeah, more no, beautiful. No, que no question. Um, yeah. I, I mentioned, I'm, I'm, uh, I also should mention as part of growing up the, the educational opportunities that uh, came my way. Um, uh, first from my parents who um, uh, were in different ways, um, very instructive. Uh, my mother was more quiet, but artsy and musical hmm. uh, and always willing to lend a hand with homework and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, my dad was uh, sort of more brash and rhetorical, um, uh, loved a good argument, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, but also uh, had a prodigious memory <clears throat> and, and would encourage reading. And as a matter of fact, uh, to sort of project uh, forward one time, one time in probably the early 1970s, I was at my parents' house and I was just walking through the room where the TV was. And my dad said, sit down, sit down. You've got to hear this guy. And uh, and so I said, who, who, what? And he's like, there is this debater uh, who's running for office. He's a fringe candidate. He's never going to win, but he's he's... <laughs> He's the best debater I've seen on a political stage in years, and so and that was, of course, that was Bernie. Oh, uh, I figured that in his, was Bernie. <laughs> in, his, in his in his youth uh, 
younger iterations running for Congress or Senate or yeah. whatever, whatever he ran for in those days. And uh, my dad, who had been a college debater mm. uh, and, and was a trial lawyer, he was just captivated by Bernie's um, uh, intellect and, yes. and ability to, to argue a point uh, yes. passionately yet uh, effectively. So that was that was the first time. Isn't uh, that's I amazing? Conscious of a guy by the name of Bernie Sanders. Interest. Did your fa was your father still alive when you were the city attorney with Bernie? He was. Uh, no, not with Bernie. Unfortunately, my dad died early of a heart attack at fifty eight, like uh, oh. just a year or two before Bernie became mayor. Unbelievable. Um, yeah. yeah. Mm. He would have enjoyed that. He would. He definitely would have. Yeah. Uh, but I also, um, I would say that uh, my education was much enhanced by, number one, um, my parents, number two, uh, in the neighborhood, uh, the, the Jewish families that I befriended uh, and would be in their houses, uh, most of them took education very, very seriously. Yeah. Uh, and I learned a lot from just watching them. Yeah. Um, at, uh, at uh, high school, I was lucky enough to have like two or three coaches that um, mm. were not only athletically inclined, but also, you know, well-grounded that um, yeah. uh, taught, uh, taught life skills. And then, um, and then there were a couple of Sisters of Mercy uh, mm. that were, I just remember them as old. They're probably younger than I am now, uh, but <laughs> who instilled in me, you know, sort of like the notion that you can do better. You, mm. you should, you should apply yourself better than, as I had, I had a lazy streak to me um, uh, at times where, you know, I would just go along to get along. Sure. And uh, the, I did the homework tomorrow. And right. these, uh, these nuns, um, two these two nuns in particular, one of whom I remember was riddled with arthritis and mm. could barely move, but her intellect was just stellar. Uh, mm. And uh, they encouraged me to, you know, really stretch um, to, uh, to 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 re reach your uh, reach potential, and then at. Uh, at St. Michael's, uh, there was uh, a uh, professor by the name of John Ingalls, who was a fairly well-known uh, regional poet, uh, national poet, but yes. his, his writing would appear periodically in the paper. And he was just an excellent um, writer in terms of, you know, precise use of wording. Mm. And, and I was, I was yeah. going along, I had him as a junior in a, in a writing seminar and I thought I was a pretty good writer. And, and the first paper I got back from him said, your subject is pedestrian and you describe it in a very inept way. <laughs> <laughs> he pushed you. Uh, he pushed me. <laughs> he pushed me. Uh, and then, um, I, uh, I took constitutional law at UVM, and uh, there was a professor by the name of Gould who was sort of legendary there for uh, constitutional law, and hmm. he was he, he just was inspiring to me. Hmm. Uh, and then at and then at uh, Notre Dame, uh, I uh, um, the, I was inspired by. President Ted, uh, Father Hesburgh, who was the, at that point the head of the U.S. Civil Rights Commission, hmm. and um, and just uh, understood, um, I thought, the way the country needed to move and uh, the way we needed to uh, recognize the value in everyone, uh, hmm. and 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 was very. Uh, hmm articulate about that mm -hmm. on a national scale, but also if you would see him on campus, I'm not sure that he ever uh, really remembered from time to time my name, but he remembered that I was from the boy from Vermont. 
and uh, <laughs> and so I'd see him on the campus and like, oh yeah, Vermonter, how how are you doing? <laughs> and Joe, you know, this, yeah, go ahead, Gary. I just no, I'm just gonna say that you have it's sound listening to you. You squeezed every opportunity there was, everything out of every opportunity to learn something from various people, situations, where you lived, your family, you, 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 like a sponge. You just absorb all this. It's so wonderful. I, I can tell who, you, why you are who you are, because it, you're, you're just you just bring it in. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was a. I must say it was a it was a fun growing up, uh, uh, sort of like punctuated from time to time with uh, recognition that life also had uh, some real challenges. For yes. example, two or three of my good friends growing up got killed in Vietnam, and mm. and right. that was um, heartbreaking. Yeah, um, and um, and I remember. I remember uh, being on a ferry boat ride for some reason um, during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And there was this guy talking about how we would be a primary target because of the Plattsburgh Air Force Base uh, mm. having um, nuclear armed um, uh, surface to air or air to air missiles and yeah. That, that sort of thing on the B-52s that then flew out of there. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, um, you know, right. Uh, right. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes um, we don't know. Uh, and it's, it's better off that we don't. Uh, That's right. And history showed there how close we came to, yeah. to uh, real conflict. That's right. But I, but I, uh, and moving moving on to sort of my uh, professional life, um, I became I became a lawyer. Uh, mm -hmm. I I was lucky enough to um, to be able to um, because I had put my name on a list uh, at the at the uh, um, at the urging of a. Uh, of a guy that lived out near us uh, in the summertime and in uh, Mallets Bay and and was um, a sergeant in the Air National Guard. He was like, you should put your name on the Air Guard list. And so I did it when I was like a sophomore in college and totally forgot about it. Uh, but my during my last year of law school, all of a sudden I get this call from uh, somebody that says they're a personnel officer in Vermont at the Air National Guard, and they were ah. like, "You're about to graduate as a lawyer, right?" And I said, "Yeah." And they said, "Well, would you like to be in the Vermont Guard? You signed up, and there's a spot in the in the legal office." Ah. And and I knew what was ahead of me otherwise, and right. so. I was like, you bet. <laughs> yeah. So right. I, I I spent uh, a fair amount of time in the Air National Guard, which oh. was uh, which was also um, um, instructive and fun in in yes. retrospect. Yes. But um, I became a lawyer, and and uh, I got hired as a um, as a deputy to Pat Leahy, who is state's attorney, and. Uh, Oh. And uh, I was appointed to be what was called the city grand juror in Burlington, um, which in those days handled um, most of the criminal cases that occurred within the city of Burlington. Uh, hmm. And so, uh, the, but between Patrick, uh, at first just Patrick Leahy and I, and then, uh, uh, no, excuse me, with another attorney, Charlie Tetzlaff, um, we uh, were doing the the county prosecution, and the the reason I say that is because Charlie Tetzlaff um, at some point decided that he was going to leave the state's attorney's office and um, go into uh, represent the University of Vermont. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that meant that I was going to move up 
from deputy state's attorney to chief deputy state's attorney, uh, mm -hmm. which, you know, since there are only three of us, it didn't count for me. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. And there was no doubt that Patrick was the guy. Uh, right. So, but anyway, um, we went over to tell uh, Mayor Kane at the time of mm. uh, that impending change. And funny enough, uh, uh, Mayor Frank Kane, who I later learned had, a, had his own sort of sense of humor, he, uh, during that meeting, he said, uh, Joe, do you, you've been, uh, we've appreciated the work you've been doing prosecuting Burlington cases. I don't know whether you know it or not, but our city attorney is is uh, resigning to go back into private practice. So we're going to have an opening for city attorney, and we'd like you to consider it. Mm -hmm. and, and I had I hadn't so much as taken a municipal law course in in, <laughs> in college. So I, uh, but I started to think about it, and and I said, well, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy uh, being a deputy state's attorney. And Mayor Kane said, right, you know, with a smile, but uh, sort of an edge to it. He goes, no, no, no. He says, Joe, come over here. He said, you'll be the department head. And if you stay with Patrick, you're always going to be second fiddle and he's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> little, little did he know. Little he did he know. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, have you told have you told Senator Leahy that story? <laughs> I have. <laughs> well, he was there. He heard it. Oh. Uh, he, he, <laughs> he, I well, think he joked back and and uh, at the time, but uh, there was. There was no doubt that Patrick was going places. Uh, <laughs> the um, but anyhow, I ultimately huh. decided to to give it a shot as city attorney, and I was glad that I did. Uh, I, yes. had nearly, I had nearly four decades of, uh, I would say, um, probably the richest legal experience that I could have hoped for. Um, yeah, yeah, serving serving under six mayors no uh, kidding. Wow. Uh, and um you know three three of whom uh spent nearly a decade each um mm -hmm. gordon pocket bernie and peter clavel um yeah. and i and i would say that uh, although they they uh, they all, including um, uh, Peter Brownell and Frank Kane and Bob Kiss, although they all had different personalities, different uh, uh, political persuasions, um, yeah. ranging you know from very progressive on Bernie's part to pretty conservative, let's say on Peter Brownell's part, right, uh, and then. Um, you know, sort of in the middle with Mayor Kane, a bit more to the left with Peter Clavel uh, and Bob Kiss. But um, what I what I enjoyed about each of them, and what I enjoyed during our time uh, uh, with the probably I would think more than a hundred city councilors. Um, Absolutely, during, during, yeah. During my time was, for some reason. Um, uh, well, I understand it was in their character for the mayors and for the councilors as well. There was a deep affection for the city, yeah. uh, a deep, um, a <clears throat> deep interest in moving it um, um, into a better place than it had been. Mm -hmm. uh, each, each with uh, different approaches, uh, yeah. but but I found I found that service to be just wonderful. Mm -hmm. Um, Mayor Kane was a, um, uh, uh, I, I'd use the word smart, but also debonair, uh, mm -hmm. you know, always, uh, 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 dressed well, well-spoken. Uh, he was classy and classy and yeah. in my, and in my mind, he was the first one that I had, um, was aware had the notion of that the history or that the future of the city involved 
a good working connection between the waterfront up to the downtown mm. um, and and that you know there were there were good and bad parts to that uh, um, the urban renewal part um, although um, very helpful in some respects uh, in many respects was also very harmful to a number yeah. of a number yeah. of families particularly you know a uh, um, a well-established uh, Italian American uh, yes. uh, segment of the city, uh, yep. and and it was unfortunate also in the sense that um, the the eminent domain procedures that the city used to acquire those houses for whatever reason was not offering fair compensation. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and many of the people that were displaced oh, um, needed, needed to go to court uh, to have jury trials to establish <laughs> a better value for their homes. Wow. That was, that was before my time. As I was going to ask but, you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but so my time was mostly the aftermath of that with the property cleared and how to, uh, how to, uh, first deal with it um, in terms of uh, redevelopment in a way yeah. that uh, protected Burlington. <clears throat> and um, so Mayor Kane had had that idea. He also uh, uh, was uh, very good about, um, I would say even cagey in the way he went about things. Um, he uh, he was responsible for the acquisition of what is now Oak Ledge Park. And, mm. and uh, that was slated for purchase by a bunch of developers from the uh, Albany area. And he, he had a meeting with them and, and he asked me to attend it. And he asked me to, um, every once in a while during the course of the meeting, uh, just break into the conversation by saying, Mayor, what are we talking to these people for? Let's just take this by eminent domain. We need it for a park. And uh -huh. he, he <laughs> said, Joe, when you say that, I'm going to shush you and I'm, I'm going to say, uh, please, uh, Mr. City Attorney, be respectful of these gentlemen. But he <laughs> says, I, I want you to be the bad cop. Well, I'm the good cop. You know? So uh, we had we had that meeting, and I played that role. And you know, whatever for whatever reason, it was effective. Wow! Uh, and we ended up purchasing the property. The wow. city ended up purchasing yeah, it yeah. Uh, for a wonderful park. Wow! Um, flash forward to Gordon Pocket, <clears throat> who um, I think is one one of the Great unappreciated mayors in terms mm. of in terms of things that he accomplished when you or were accomplished with uh, with the help of others, of course, they're always yeah. help from others. But during his time, um, we acquired what is now Letty Park. Um, mm. we, pa uh, we passed the city passed a series of ordinances uh, that. Uh, led to the amortization or the elimination of the blight on the waterfront um, right. that it accrued accru uh, from the industrial times, the oil, the oil storage tanks, the yep. junk junkyards and metal salvage yards. Uh, uh, you wouldn't, if you see pictures of the way it looks, yeah. that is horrible. No, it's not a horrible. Yeah. Um, so he was responsible for that is mm. during his time the church street marketplace was created right. that's right and the and the uh the, the defense of the first major defense of act 250 occurred uh mm. when when we opposed the original pyramid mall out in, out right. in Williston right uh, uh under his under his leadership the king street youth center uh got created so uh, but his style was totally different than the styles of like Frank Kane and then right. and then say Bernie, um, um, he, the uh, uh, Gordon would sit in a coffee shop, and and people would come and sit down and, and right. most of the business was done there and as the yeah, <clears throat> right. and 
as a young city attorney at that point, I didn't want to go over there uh, because, <laughs> uh, but I did from time to time, but I always tried to go and get out uh, yeah. because I, I felt that just, I had too much energy for just sitting yeah, in, yeah, yeah. in a coffee shop. And, and yeah. um, uh, but it was effective uh, mm -hmm. um, the way the way he did it. Uh, but then, but then Bernie came in with a totally different style. Mm -hmm. uh, Bernie was uh, passionate about many things, and you know um, that was. And you were you were a part of that Renaissance, right. so to speak, Gary. Right. The uh, yep. and the first years were the toughest. Uh, yes. He had Bernie had uh, a lot of wind that he had to face, and uh, with people, uh, including many of the current, then current city councilors who thought that the end of the world as we know it had occurred with, exactly. uh, <laughs> with his election. Yeah. And, and I uh, found myself as city attorney in the middle of many a political battle. Oh, uh, I know. Where, where you know, the both part and for whatever reason the legal aspects of it uh, would become challenged and right. I um uh, I, right. if I if I look back I'm I'm glad to have survived that and I I remember telling myself look you you are like the guy with the white and black striped shirt you're you're a referee here yeah and you you cannot um uh, you cannot uh be uh, a partisan you yeah. have to be you have to be you know straight down the middle and right. and and how and how you um, do this or you'll have no credibility that's uh, right with the with any of the competing factions ultimately so but bernie you know he had he had um a public side and a private side, and I enjoyed both. Uh, mm. I uh, the public side was, you know, his passionate debate uh, and position, mm. particularly his uh, work for the disadvantaged. But he yeah. was also he was also a very careful steward of the city's um, uh, financial uh, yes. status and um, its uh, its. It's various commitments. I particularly um, enjoyed Bernie's commitment to the youth, uh, mm -hmm. the establishment of the youth office, his attention to parks and rec programs, um, mm -hmm. uh, that sort of thing, which which got far um, uh, less notice. Yeah, uh, that's true. I also, I also, um, in, I believe that Bernie. Although you know we fought a couple of losing battles with regard to taxation of the institutional facilities, um, uh, I think that uh, he sort of like reset uh, the the um, the balance of power, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, and and moved the city towards uh, what ultimately became a more cooperative collegial relationship. Uh, among uh, the educational institutions and right. the, health, the health institutions right. that we had. Um, uh, Joe, you know, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, yeah. so <clears throat> I'm listening, listening to you. You have six different mayors. You have um, pretty significant shifts in personalities and, and law became very important in many of these mayors' lives, uh, how how we moved things, how we changed, the, like, the waterfront. And how, how did you take care of yourself during all that time? And when after a city council meeting, could you go home and go to sleep? How did you deal with all that? It was, uh, that's, a, that's a great question, Gary. And at times it was, I look back and I say, how did how did this happen? There were there were years where, if it wasn't a city council meeting, at I would have the full day at work, mm -hmm. and, then, and then I would bargain collectively for the city um, right. with, the, with the various unions in in night meetings. Yes. So yes. I can remember one time um, a. Uh, 
a collective bargaining meeting that I thought was going to go to like 10 o'clock or so finished at like 730. And, and I, I, I had the feeling that it was like a vacation. And, <laughs> and then I remember saying to myself, wait a second, this is nonsense. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, starting at eight o'clock in the morning and finishing at 730 is not a vacation. Uh, right. But the, you know, the you sort of get locked into the effort. Yeah. Um, and the way the way I would try to take care of myself would be, you know, by going out and playing basketball at noontime uh, or going going up to the YMCA and um, mm -hmm. going or going out and running uh, mm -hmm. or, you know, in the summertime, getting away at the end of the day and taking a swim or going out in the boat or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, to, to try to balance things. But I, people that work with me, and I should say too, that one of, one of the, whatever success I was likely to, I was fortunate enough to have was in many cases as a result of great assistance that I had from mm -hmm. both, um, the cadre of assistant city attorneys that worked uh, for the city, some great people, and um, and also uh, my my own uh, legal partners and uh, mm. associates. Yeah, you had that I've, some some wonderful lawyers. Um, um, I, yeah, absolutely. And we were yep. we we were very fortunate to to uh, work collegially, and um, and some of our internal meetings would be knock down, drag out. You know, in terms I of. Bet. Uh, of uh, clashing, clashing of intellects, but we'd yeah. we'd come to a result, and then we'd be, we'd we that was that was our story, and we were sticking with it. Um, yeah, and uh, and that seemed that seemed to work. Um, you know, uh, Peter Clavel, for example, when he became mayor, I had the benefit of working with him both in Winooski beforehand and as CEDO mm -hmm. director and HR director in Burlington. But, yeah. you know, he was tremendously effective too in terms yes, of acquiring waterfront property, uh, advancing the public trust doctrine um, yeah. and start of moving towards that connection that I was talking about mm -hmm. uh, between the waterfront and the downtown. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, it uh, it was it was great fun. Well, I have a couple of questions before we have to end. And did did you ever uh, think about running for office yourself? You know, Gary, yes, but then no. Uh, mm -hmm. I uh, there were two things that um, uh, that potentially. Um, uh, would have moved me in a different direction. Uh, two or three times I got opportunities from governors to move over into state service and be like a commissioner or something yeah. um, with like the public service board or banking and insurance and that sort of thing. And I would give those serious attention, but I liked what I was doing mm -hmm. um, more, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, and then uh, with regard to a elective um, service, you know, I, uh, when I first uh, became a prosecutor, my intent was, yes, I'm going to, I'm going to run for, you know, office and hopefully yep. be elected and be a politician and that sort of thing. And then the more I worked with um, elected mm -hmm. politicians, the more I felt I was, my my joy came uh, as much from helping as part of a team and uh, that I didn't need to be, I didn't need to be number one as it yep. were. And, yep. and, yep. Be yeah. And I saw what mayors had to go through. I mean, yep. I thought being a mayor of Burlington was for many a year, the toughest job in the state yep. because while the governors had layers of protection, uh, that's right the secretary of administration and the governor's assistants or whatever, the mayor was every, out there. Everyone had the mayor's number yep. and people would stop into the mayor's office and whether it was, um, 
trash on the street uh, to complicated million dollar uh, financing issues. Um, the, ma the mayors uh, were, were bearing their responsibility. That's right, yeah. Um, I, should, I should mention though, Gary, that um, you know, part of part of li living too is your family side, and and yeah. uh, my ex my siblings, uh, my wife, my kid. Um, uh, I got to I got to see uh, our son grow up. Um, and he was an athlete, and I, as a result, uh, sort of drifted into coaching. I, mm. I coached basketball at both Rice and Burlington. Mm. Uh, through that, I also sort of developed the AAU basketball program in Vermont. And, no and, and as a result of that effort, uh, by happenstance, first through the kids, but then ourselves, uh, we got, we got a, uh, what we call the Burlington Baltimore friendship exchange uh, occurring. And, we interfaced hmm. on on uh, a regular basis with um, a program in the, if you will, one of the least yep. prosperous areas of Baltimore, East yep. Baltimore, called Cecil Kirk, which happened yep. to produce great athletes like Reggie Lewis and Muggsy Bogues and people of that nature, mm -hmm. but but um, was so different, so very different, right. Than, than um, uh, Burlington, and, yeah. and and such an enriching experience for our for our kids. We I would guess. go down. We would go down there in connection with Martin Luther King usually, and we ended up through their efforts playing in like Washington D.C. as a as a preliminary game to a big college game like Georgetown versus Syracuse. Wow, and, nice. And, and uh, we all became um, honorary citizens of Baltimore. Wow. And, and that group would come up uh, to Burlington in the summertime and we would try to reciprocate. And, you know, the mayors were so gracious to uh, them. Champlain College would house them. Yeah. And uh, we would give them a Vermont experience. I remember- That's fantastic. Remember a, a young kid we, we had taken a bus out to uh, the Conant Farm in Richmond uh, to watch, to have them watch uh, a dairy production. And I remember this little tough kid, you know, <laughs> uh, with a do-rag on his head, right. getting, getting off the bus saying, I'm telling you, coach, I don't do cows. I don't <laughs> do cows. And, and, and by the time the day was finished, he had become an accomplished milker of uh, of Oh my cows. gosh, and that's amazing! Of course, he had never seen in his life uh, uh, in inner city Baltimore. So uh, uh, one of the that's one of the things that I'm uh, that's most, most proud of. But in the end, uh, you know, it's just uh, um, the opportunity to work with people like you uh, that were on the city council. The opportunity to work with the commissioners, uh, the various people that made Burlington what it what it is, and I hope what it will remain. Yeah. Um, despite yep. challenges that every that are faced in every generation, uh, I just uh, was proud to be able to be a part of it for well, so long. For so and long. Joe, uh, your public service is uh, beyond, and I so thank you for all that you've done for the city. And we'll continue to do. Um, and uh, we're, we're lucky to have you. We're lucky to have well, your family here. Be honest with you. I really appreciate. I really appreciate that, Gary. And I really appreciate the time that uh, spending with you today. And same uh, here. It's been too long. <laughs> it's been too long. <laughs> yeah. Well, other, other you. than other than this, we need to get together. Absolutely. Well, thank you again. Enjoy the rest of your day and uh, much appreciated. And we'll uh, we'll connect again soon. Thank stay you, Joe. Warm, stay warm, Gary. Yes, you too. All right. Bye-bye.